Amesy here of Amesy's Antics. Welcome to my channel. I hope you are well today because we have another sewing project sort of to get stuck into. In this week's video I am going to show you how to make a hoodie from scratch using the Tilly and Buttons stretch book and it is the Stella hoodie pattern. I've already made the joggers in this set and I have graduated on to making the hoodie so I thought I would share with you the process of making this hoodie if it is sort of a new project for you. I've never made anything like this before. I've only made the joggers from this book as well as a few dresses so it had a few more complex steps however it is really easy to make once you get stuck into it. I think it took me about um an afternoon into an evening so quite a few hours to make but I think the results have turned out wonderfully. If you would like to see how to make this hoodie from scratch then let's get crafting. So here is my fabric choices this lovely pink one with some black arrows on it and it is a French terry material um, I got this from Flamingo Fabrics so I can link it down below if you want to use the same but it's gonna make a really nice funky hoodie I think and then for the lining of the hood I am going to use the same material that I used to make those really comfy Stella joggers of the same pattern for this but instead I'm going to use the lining which is a really nice bit like a fleecy but it's really nice and cuddly so I thought that'd be a lovely contrast for the hood and be nice and cosy and then the same pink ribbon not ribbon yeah it is ribbon knit ribbon um, for the cuffs to the hoodie so that's my fabric choices so let's get cutting out so here I am just pinning my traced pattern pieces onto the material now I am actually making a size 4 hoodie but with a gradient to a size 5 on the lower part of the body so that the hoodie is slightly larger um, around the lower waist and hip area because I wanted it a bit more baggy and then using a rotary cutter to cut it all out. And once it was all cut out I just used my scissors to clip in all of the notches indicated on the pattern piece on all parts of the pattern pieces that required it. Then using some knit interfacing just pressing this in place where the buttonholes are going to go for the cord around the hood as well as marking out where I'm going to sew the buttonhole to make the opening for the drawstring. And then the first thing to do is sew the shoulder seams together using that zigzag stitch that you need to use for stretch material. Now this went together really well and smoothly and as you can see it has sewn beautifully. And then the next part of the project is to start creating the hood and this is both in the lining piece as well as the outer piece. So you want to make sure that the right sides are together and sew in the centre hood to the side hood. And it is a curve but it does sew in well, again using that stretch stitch or zigzag stitch and I've just placed a pin in the front part of that side bit so I know which is the side piece of the hood, if that makes sense. And then completing the hood by attaching the remaining side piece to the free edge of the centre hood, hood sorry, where I put the pin in place that I knew which bit was which, matching up the notches and pinning it all away around. And then heading back to the sewing machine to sew all of that together, remembering to backstitch at the start and end of the seam and removing the pins as I went so I didn't break any of the needles. Once this was sewn together, it was then time to press open the seams to help them set in place. And this is really important to do on any sewing project. So make sure you always have an iron handy to press out them seams on the front and back because it really does help set the stitches in. And keeping on with making the hood, it was time to create those buttonholes to create the opening for the drawstring cord to go through. So I am just using my buttonhole foot here and I am still having a bit of 
problem with using this so I think I need to practice the buttonholes a lot more but it hasn't turned out too bad and I have got them matching on either side and they look fairly neat so I'm not going to complain too much. Then finishing off the hood by pinning the lining piece right side to the outer piece of the hood right sides together and making sure all the notches were lined up making sure there's lots of pins to keep everything in place and then heading to the sewing machine to sew a seam all the way around that edge to connect them both together finally pressing them with the iron again and making sure that it's right side out when this is being pressed and slightly rolling the outer part of the hood inside so it hides that lining if that makes sense And to create the channel for the drawstring for the hoodie hood, just pinning this so that the lining stays inside and it is slightly rolled over from the outside edge and sewing a two centimeter seam from the edge all the way around with a straight stitch. So this is probably one of the only times I use a straight stitch with the knit fabric, but you can see how neatly this looks together and has created a really nice even channel for the drawstring to sit in later on. And then finishing off the hood by connecting the bottom edges of the hood together with again another seam using the zigzag stitch or stretch stitch once again. So I've just pinned the hood to the hoodie, uh, right sides to right side and I've had a bit of trouble with this and I don't know if it's, I've just done the pattern wrong or what but I've made it fit by pinning. So I'm going to see what it's like when I sew, but the notches didn't match up where they should have not matched up. They were nowhere near. So I'm going to see how it goes and maybe I have to unpick it or maybe it will turn out just right. We will see. So let's head to the sewing machine. So the hood is now attached and it actually went on quite well to say the notches didn't line up properly. Um, there's no puckering, it's all laying nice and flat and the two centre pieces meet, I mean they probably should meet a bit more like that but I am not complaining for the first time of putting a hood in. So yes, now what I need to do is trim these seams and then do some top stitching I think. I think that's what it says in the book so let's have a go at that. So yes, press the seams um, to help them set and then do a zigzag top stitch around the edge and this just helps the hoodie seam inside lay flat so it sort of connects that seam allowance to the hoodie body making it sit really nice and flat as well as giving the hoodie a little bit more of a decorative look as you can see here and I think it looks really nice with that zigzag. Then I attached the sleeves and I think this may be called raglan style because you are putting the sleeves in flat so you're just attaching the sleeves to that shoulder seam but not attaching them and so, sort of sewing them around the armhole because this will be sewn in when you do the side seams so it's a really easy way to put in sleeves and then I am just using the addition of a kangaroo pouch so I'm following the instructions in the book there are some adaptations to the hoodie and this is one of them so it's a really nice pocket for the front of the hoodie and I'm putting this in before we sew the side seams up because it makes it so much easier. Then it is time to pin all the side seams together as well as the sleeve seams on the lower edge and sewing all these around again with a zigzag stitch or stretch stitch and back stitching the start and end of the seam to add some added strength. And then it was time to add in the cuffs for the ends of the sleeve and of course I am using the ribbon that I used in the joggers and using the same method so I've taken off some of the sewing arm here so it makes it easier to stretch the cuff around and you do have to stretch it slightly when attaching. Then finally overlocking the raw edge of the bottom of the hoodie before stitching this up 
in a hem and then the hoodie is more or less complete all I needed to do then was add in the drawstrings around the hoodie part using some cotton ribbon type material I think it is I bought it on Amazon I'll link it below and then the hoodie was complete to make a hoodie from scratch using the Tilly and Buttons Stella hoodie pattern. This is such a super easy pattern to follow. Tilly really does break down the steps and makes everything feel accessible. I've, like I said, I've not made a lot of clothes. I've made a lot of dresses and, and skirts before, but never something like this and I think it's turned out fabulous. There's a few little mistakes that maybe you would notice and maybe you wouldn't. I know I would notice them but does it really matter? We're wearing more leisure wear at the minute and not really leaving the house so no one else is going to see these mistakes and you know it's all relative. It's still a really functional top so and the mistakes are minuscule anyway. So let me know what you think of this hoodie in them comments below. Have you made it before? Do you fancy taking up sewing and having a go at making this? Let me know in them comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, then please do give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep up with more of my crafting antics. Then probably going to be some more sewing inspiration because I have a ton of fabric that I've purchased and have lots of makes. I have three of the Tilly and Buttons books, so there's loads of makes in them books that I will share with you on here. If that is something you would like to see, so let me know in the comments if you would like to see that as well. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to keep up and it will alert you each time all my videos go live. Don't forget to check out my blog Ames's Antics which is linked here below because there's always a ton more information over on the blog for you to have a look at and with that said I will see you in next week's video and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and week and I will see you next time. Bye!